Good morning. This morning I want to talk about uh, St. Gregory the Great, a little different one. He was a pope, uh, but he started out uh, just in, uh, uh, in Rome. Uh, it's in the year 540. Roman Empire had fallen apart, and uh, he is brought in as pope. Now, rather than talk about his life and the details of his birth, I thought it'd be interesting just to hear what he has to say. So often, you know, we take things and we kind of describe them, and we summarize old life or whatever. But to just hear this guy's writing, I thought said a lot about him. So here you go. This is a homily he gave <coughs> uh, on the prophet Ezekiel. Son of man, I have made you a watchman in the house of Israel. Note that a man whom the Lord sends forth a preacher is called a watchman. A watchman always stands at the height so that he can see from afar what is coming. Anyone appointed to be a watchman for the people must stand at the height for all his life and help them by his foresight. That's good. How hard is it for me to say this? For by these very words I denounce myself. I cannot preach with any competence, and yet so insofar as I do succeed, still I myself do not live a life according to my own preaching. I do not deny my responsibility. I recognize that I am slothful and negligent, but perhaps the accomplishment of my fault will win the pardon from my just judge. Indeed, when I was in the monastery, I could curb my idle talk and usually be absorbed in my prayers. Hmm. Since I assume the burden of pastoral care, my mind can no longer be collected. It, concerns, it is concerned with so many matters. I am forced to consider the affairs of the church and of the monasteries. I must weigh the lives and acts of individuals. I am responsible for the concerns of our citizens. I must worry about the invasions of roving bands of barbarians and beware of the wolves who lie in wait for my very flock. I must become an administrator lest the religious go in want. I must put up with certain robbers without losing patience, and at times I must deal with them in all charity. With my mind divided and torn to pieces by so many problems, how can I meditate or preach wholeheartedly without neglecting the ministry of proclaiming the gospel? Moreover, in my position, I must often communicate with worldly men. At times I let my tongue run. For if I am always and severe in my judgments, and the worldly will avoid me, and I can never attack them as I would. As a result, I often listen patiently to chatter, and because I too am weak, I find myself drawn in little by little into idle conversation, and I begin to talk freely about matters which once I would have avoided. What once I found tedious, I now enjoy. Hmm. So who am I to be a watchman? For I do not stand on the mountain of action, but lie down on the valley of weakness. Truly, the all-powerful creator and redeemer of mankind can give me, in spite of my weaknesses, a higher life, effective speech, because I love him. I do not spare myself in speaking of him. In these words, he uh, brings the fact that when he was in the monastery, he was in a good prayer. Now in a busy life, he still has to be able to be in touch with the God he loves. Let us, in our busy lives, be in touch with our God who leads us.